Today's active self-protection lesson is made possible thanks to the generosity of sponsors like LuckyGunner.com. Please check out Lucky Gunner for all your ammunition needs. How much time have you spent sparring against somebody or actually fighting, where you've also got this like, you know, <laughs> disco ball coming after you? Wait, what? Who? How? And it is actually disorienting, believe it or not. Now, the challenge, of course, is that if you do that, and I'm going to be disorienting with it, well, now I'm not gripping here, I'm gripping here. Which, when it comes time not to punch, but when it comes time to strike, it's perfectly good. It's actually helpful, right? So I have a little bit more backup mass here. I just don't like punching from here because I feel like my strength comes away. But I can, again, if I'm there and I'm going, boom, and I'm like, okay. See how he, he just doesn't like looking at it. <laughs> so then, so an interesting bit. Let's just try that for a second. Grab your light again. We're actually not going to make contact because I don't want anybody to get hurt. Okay? But pass it, you pass it back and forth. And at that time, just be the guy with the light and with the person who's coming, feel what it's like trying to wade in with the light on and off you. Make sense? Just feel it for a second so you can kind of experience it. Get off me, dude. Get off me. Jesus. Hey, hey dude, get away. I want to fight. Get like off me. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> that is a thing. You know, you were asking earlier what I got out of this, uh -huh. this boxing thing. Yep. All of a sudden, I'm used to having to get here to get around these. Yes. But with this in my hand, all of a sudden, these are actually targets. Oh, yeah. So that's what I was trying to get at earlier. I just couldn't verbalize it. But it's yeah. awesome because he's doing this, and I'm like, I can hit that now. <laughs> Whereas it's normally not. I'm like, no, I'll pick, I'll pick right through that. Yeah, you want to leave your forearms out there? Thank you. Yeah. I'll just blast through a few of those. So, how did it feel trying to aggress through a 1200 lumen photonic barrier in a lit room? Oh, it just sucks. <laughs> it just sucks. You're like this after a while. Like, just, yeah. So, I'm going to tell you what it makes me feel like, right? Against um, uh, one of my partners who's obviously got some boxing skills. Um, and you feel like Vasil Lomachenko, man. You feel like all of a sudden, boom, I hit this guy and, and all of a sudden I drop and then just smoke bomb. Because because all of a sudden, you know, uh, uh, she's gonna hit me with this light, and I'm here, and then she moves, and by the time I'm able to see again, she's gone. And it gives me this flash of, wait, what? And, and of course, I'm using my eyes to find my target, and I have to actually use my eyes to lead into my target, right? I'm, I'm directing my punch with my eyes, because they're moving. So, in all the boxing training you'll ever do, nobody ever says, spot it, close eyes, and throw a punch. That ain't how this works, fam. Right? You have to you have to land the punch with the eyes because they're moving. You have to drive into it. It's a very complicated calculus that your mind does while the punch is being thrown. However, the light instantly, man, I'm coming in to throw it, and oh my gosh, where did she go? So I can't track anymore, and things go down. So I, I'm now I'm telling you, I'm gonna get in trouble for this with somebody, but. The reality is a low quality light without a high quality reflector that projects a high candela, high lux beam, so a very organized beam of light will not do as good a job at this. This is where a high quality reflector on a high quality light matters because it directs so much of that beam in the same direction, it overwhelms your optic sensors. And in a small package like this, 1200 lumens to the face, even in a lit environment, it's hard. If you're out at night, like John was talking about, you know, doing uh, rescue stuff like that, or it's dark outside and some guy's like, hey, I'm coming towards you, you bop them with that light and it is like, you seriously just drop the ninja smoke bomb. Give him an eye. It's, isn't it amazing? It's so tragic, close my eyes and run out of it. <laughs> I was trying to figure out yeah. if I can use it as a tool to close distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A hundred for next. You keep setting them up, I'll yeah. keep knocking them down. Okay. Where did my light go? So, Candice, you had an interesting thought about using this not as a defensive avoidance, uh, the lumens, but as an offensive tool. Yeah. So, um, it was interesting to me because when he was coming in and I was hitting him in the eye with it, he was blinded, so it's like a pause button. Mm -hmm. So I could use that to get away, but I could also use it to close distance and attack him when he can't effectively respond. 
So it really is, and I, I really encourage you, uh, if you use this on the map, and again, I just want you to see, we're not in darkness here. When we do this and it's dark outside, it's infinitely worse. So, so again, you hit them with that, that little bit, bang, you hit them in, the, in that little tiny bit, and it, it's an instant pause button, not for long, right? half a second. But imagine if every time you got ready to throw a punch, your opponent had to hesitate a half a second before they responded. What does that mean for your chances of success? Way up. I mean, huge up. So that's our next turn. Now we're going to, to use that on the offensive side and, and hit it a little bit, pop, and then go. Okay? So of course you gotta be careful with your partner, right? So if I'm here and, and I put mine away, Candice is gonna use that, get me, and then go. And she's going to be kind because we're friends, but she's going to use that to, to plan what she's got. So we're going, whatever, she hits that. Oh god, what? <laughs> it's no. It, it, it's I, it's hard for me to describe to you because I'm not gaming this. I'm not I'm not going, oh, she's gonna hit me. But but here's the fun part. This is something that I don't were, were you let me ask you if you were doing this on purpose. Because one of the things that I saw was you were standing outside my range. Yeah. And then like bang, now I can come into your range. Yeah. So it was a standoff tool that let you come into a space where you can hit me, because I'm taller than you and longer than you. But with that, I couldn't get around it. The, the time that you, I'm sure you saw her, she slapped me upside the head. I didn't let her do that. <laughs> that makes me look dumb on camera, which will be awesome video. I don't want to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, it's such a weird sensation. Cool. Guys, break real quick. Amazing, if I think about this as a multiplier, watch if I use John. And instead of going, so, so the, the, the first way is one, hit, and out, yeah. right? But if I use this as my jab, and I go bang, mm. pop, bang, pop, mm. bang, pop, pop, here, yeah. movie, pop, 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 <laughs> it, it's the most disorienting thing you can imagine. Yeah. Something to work on. If you're on the receiving end, how to try to negate as much as you can, watching the, I guess, Watching the hips and keeping them yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. So if I'm not looking at it, then I can, yep. I can see where you're going, right? So, I mean, but people that I got to train of course, all the time. Now, now, be, here's the counter to the counter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you gotta see what's up. Yeah, right. Yeah. So if you see, so that's great. You're not watching up here. Great, awesome. Bang, bang, bang. Right. And I'm gonna hit him again. So, yeah. Well, I was just thinking. You were mentioning earlier that one of the issues is that you're often not fighting one on one. Yeah. Fighting right. multiple people. And so one of the things we always try to do is try to put them yeah. in each other's yep. way. Lock in. Right. So if you can do if you can use light to corral them yeah. into the same line. Right? Because if we're here and sure. I gotta try to do this at the same yeah. time, that's just yeah. really hard. Or if I can get you to go that way. Yeah, run in there. Right. Then I carve a path to this yeah. game. This will be an interesting thing I think for you guys here on the maps yeah. to work a oh, bit. Yeah and to play a bit at night and it's fine. How do I use this effectively? Because I think you're starting going, this is brewing now. That's good. I mean, I gotta get out, excuse me, hey man, I don't want out. No, you're not getting out of here, buddy. You're not, there's no hey man, bang it. What? No, I'm gone, you know what I mean? Because it's, 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 a, it's a game changer in the sense of how we can approach hand-to-hand -hand situations. Mm -hmm. our, our altercation. It's, it's, a, it's a completely different uh, approach that we can use to, to keep distance and, and, and like Brown was saying, Scrap the door without having to engage multiple partners if you if, if don't have to. Uh, and, and really from SWAT Ministries, we want to thank Surefire for, for sending these lights out because it literally is can save lives and is going to save lives and save injury and save a lot of, of, of bad things that can happen. These guys are risking their lives every single night to bring these children out of the nightmare. We want to thank you guys so much for that. It means a lot to us. It means a lot for active self-protection for partnering with us and bringing that out to help us in this fight. Come on, man. Anytime. Let's do it.